Hello everyone, welcome back again. Today I want to talk about the frequentist confidence intervals, which is a commonly misunderstood concept. After explaining the confidence intervals, I will switch to Bayesian credible sets or the credible intervals. And having introduced both those concepts, I will show them in R and how to apply them. Okay. For the first case, let's consider a simple linear regression model. Suppose that we have a variable called y, which is our independent variable, and we have a single variable called x1, and we have beta coefficients, and then we have some residual or error terms. In this single linear regression model, we're going to estimate beta, okay? And in a classical, regression framework, our betas are constant. They are not random variables as in Bayesian analysis, okay? Suppose we estimate our regression model and then we get beta coefficients as true, okay? <clears throat> and after estimating the linear regression model, we also get the confidence intervals in frequentist approach. Let's say our 95 percent confidence interval is 1.4 and 2.6 okay and having estimated the beta coefficients and then the confidence interval sometimes you see people interpreting this 95 percent confidence interval as being the probability probability of true beta being between the lower bound and the upper bound of confidence interval as 95%, okay? <clears throat> In other words, you will see lots of people saying that the probability that the true beta will be between nine, uh, 1.4 and 2.6 is 95%. This is totally wrong, okay? This is totally wrong. Okay, so what's really the true definition or the true meaning of confidence intervals? Okay, so we have to be careful at this point. So, the true meaning of confidence intervals is as follows. Let's say we have a data set called DF for which we estimated our classical linear regression, given it here, okay? So here we do a Monte Carlo simulation, okay? So each time we randomly draw a new data set, okay? Let's say df1, df2, df3, and many, many times, let's say df n, n is a very large number, okay? So meaning that we're going to sample <coughs> many, many times from the original data set, okay? And for those each resampled new data sets, okay, we're going to estimate a new model, new model with the same regression specification, okay? Exactly the same regression spe specification, only with a new resampled data set, okay? And for each new regression, we're going to get new estimates for beta head, okay? And also new confidence intervals. And in this case, our inter interval calculated from those Monte Carlo experiments will contain the frequentist estimate, which is the original beta, 
frequent estimate at the frequency given by the confidence interval of 95%. Okay. <clears throat> so at this point, it doesn't say anything about the probability and the true value. Okay. So we're going to resample data from the original data set many, many times. We get new coefficients, new confidence intervals, and then let say we have many many beta coefficients for each resample data and then the interval of those new beta coefficients uh, which is calculated from those monte carlo experiments will contain this frequentist estimate which is our initial original beta Be original beta at the frequency of 95% okay it doesn't say anything about the probability so i know this concept is a little bit tricky to comprehend but once we show it on our studio i think it will be clear introduced those concepts now we're going to apply them on r okay i open up R Studio and then create a new script. First, I create. First, I clean the current environment and load the libraries. Then we're going to set a theme for our blocks. Okay, now I'm going to create a data set. I'm going to create an X from a random normal distribution. There are going to be 100 observations. And then I will create a series called Y, which is two times X plus some random components. And then I'm going to combine X and Y as a new data. Okay. So <clears throat> for resampling and creating new models, I will click create as, a, as an empty list and I create the coefficients which are the betas as a as an empty vector okay and then i will also create an empty vector for the intercept values now <coughs> i will do a resampling 10 times I take the original data set DF and I draw 20 observations randomly and then I do this procedure 10 times. For each procedure or each step I create a new model called J and then I fit the model and for each model I use a new data set. Our new data set is sample through the, through the original data set. I also get new coefficients and new uh, inter, uh, intercept values. Okay, now I run this and to make it easy to see, let, let's see. So those are our new intercept values. So each intercept is estimated using a new resampled data from the original data set. Okay, I can also show you the estimated coefficients. Okay, let's say for the first resampling we get beta as being 201, and then in the second estimation it's 2.18 and etc. Okay. <clears throat> So now, let's first visualize the <coughs> uh, initial data frame, which is our uh, original data set. Okay, so you see we have X and Y, and then we have some correlation between N X and Y. All right. So again, I'm going to... I'm going to a loop so i will do it 10 times so i take the original plot 
so each time I will fit a new line okay I take the intercept value as the intercept estimated in each model and the slope or beta coefficients also from the previous estimated model okay now I do this and then let's run P and see what happens okay so you see in the original data set each time I fit a new line okay each line is different because for each step our intercept and the estimated slope coefficient is different so if I add the linear model so which is estimated using our original data set and then we're going to get this one okay it's shown by the blue <coughs> line okay so the interval calculated from the Monte Carlo experiments so in our case they are shown by the red lines will contain the frequentist estimate which is shown by the blue line at the frequency of 95% okay this is at the very heart of frequentist confidence interval I'm going to switch to Bayesian part so to make inferences based on probability we're going to apply the Bayesian methods in frequentist approach we cannot do that okay first we load the libraries and another library for plotting and then I'm going to fit a simple Bayesian regression I will just for simplicity take the normal priors and then use our original data set then having done this one I am going to take the posterior draws from our fitted model. I take the model and I convert it to the table, which is a modern version of data frame. And then I take the coefficients for x, which is our beta in this framework. Take it. And then I am going to plot the density of those uh, posterior values. Okay. Now we have the posterior distribution of our beta coefficients. So the mean or the median values are very close to 2, so which is something expected because we created our original data set like y being 2 times x plus some random component. So that's why we should expect beta coefficient to be something close to 2. Okay. And unlike the <coughs> frequentist approach, in the Bayesian part, we can make inferences based on probability. Like the frequentist regression estimation, so in Bayesian setting, the true beta parameter lies within a range with a certain probability value. Okay? This is the very fundamental reason between the Bayesian regression analysis and the frequentist approach. Okay, I hope you like this video and you find it useful. In case you like it, please hit the like button and drop a comment.